Let's take a look at some in-depth search engine analysis and how to do competitor analysis when you're in Longtail Platinum. So as you know, you can use the keyword competitiveness score to get a quick idea about how difficult it's going to be to rank for that keyword. Anything under 30, we consider to be a low competition keyword. And if you're using target KC, then we've given you a KC range to look at as well. So if you're looking at a keyword that's borderline, in the high 20s or low 30s if you have a brand new site, or at the top of your target KC range if you have one, you probably want to take a deeper look at the results and see what you're up against in terms of the top 10 results in Google. That way you can make an educated and informed decision about whether or not you should actually be targeting that keyword with your next blog post. So I'm just going to look at this keyword organic backpacking food, which has a keyword competitiveness score of 28 and 90 searches per month. And let me point out a few things that you should be looking at when you're making your decisions. So we'll click on the keyword to get into the comp competition analysis and then scroll down to look at all of the competitor results. One of the first things you want to look for is relevant results in the top 10. That sounds kind of obvious, but there are times when you'll see results that really aren't that relevant to the keyword you're looking at. They might be talking about something similar, so maybe it's a post that's about organic food in general or about backpacking food, but it's not about organic backpacking food. And so the page title is going to tell you a lot about what this page is about. And it's a sign of strength when you see the exact keyword in some of the page titles. And you can see that the keywords are bolded here where they show up. That means it's a little bit stronger result because it's laser focused on that topic. So when you see results where part or all of the keywords aren't included in the title, that's actually a good sign for you. That shows that the page may not be as relevant to the keyword search, so there's a possibility that this result could be beaten by a page with a more targeted title. The next important things to look at are the page trust flow and the domain trust flow. These are numbers that come in from Majestic along with the citation flow values. They just speak to the authority of the site overall. So in other words, the likelihood of that site to rank well in the search engines comes down to good trust flow and citation flow. These numbers indicate two different but related things. Citation flow indicates the overall links to the page or domain, and trust flow indicates the links from really trusted sites that are passing some authority to this site. Those sites passing authority are strong authority sites in their niches. So citation flow reflects overall links and trust flow reflects link quality and both are important but that's why you'll often see the citation flow value is higher than the trust flow. That's because the number of links coming directly from a really trusted site or from a site that has a link from a trusted site is almost always going to be lower than the total links overall. So a medium or high trust flow value indicates that the site has really strong authority in its niche. You want to see a few results that have page trust flow and citation flow under 25. I like to see at least two. The domain trust flow and citation flow show the same thing but for the domain instead of the page. I don't look at it as closely as at the page TF and CF values, but you can see here that the higher the domain trust flow, the stronger that brand. So backcountry.com has a 60 domain trust flow because it's a much more authoritative brand in this backpacker space. So when you see a lot of 50 plus domains, that's a sign that these are pretty strong results. One final thing to just take a look at are the referring domains pointing to the page and domain. This just simply means how many other sites are referencing this page or this domain. So it's just another factor to keep in mind because it's a good sign when you see multiple results that have very few referring domains or even zero. The reason that's a good indicator for you is that it suggests that you might not need backlinks in order to rank well for this keyword either because other people have done it. Similarly, if you look at the site age and you see that there are a few sites under two years old, that's a good sign too because if newer sites are ranking, then you have a good chance of ranking as well. Overall, if you stick to the keyword competitiveness model and looking at that KC score, it's going to be enough for you to decide on good keywords to target. 
But sometimes it's useful to be able to dig down into the results when it's something on the higher side, like a 30 or right at the top of your target KC range. Then you can figure out for yourself and trust your gut a little bit and see what you're up against before you make a decision on spending the time or money to create a piece of content focused on this keyword. Hopefully this helped you figure out how to decide between slightly more competitive keywords that are worth targeting and ones that you shouldn't spend your time on. So get out there and find some keywords.